Today we are taking a look at this TT Artisan 11mm f2.8 fisheye lens for the Leica M-mount. This is a lens unlike any other M-mount lens that I've ever owned. I've actually never owned a proper fisheye lens until now. I was originally just going to borrow this lens for a video from today's sponsor, KEH Camera. But after using it for a little bit, I said, you know what, send me an invoice. I'm going to hang on to this thing because a fisheye lens is definitely a novelty kind of lens. It's not something I would use all the time but it does certain things very well. So we're gonna take a look at what I've done with the lens so far and just what it's like using a fisheye lens in general, but also especially on an M. I'll go ahead and give you a quick rundown on the lens itself. Again, it's in the Leica M mount natively and it's an 11 millimeter F2.8. Your aperture ranges from F2.8 all the way to F16. You've got this little uh, aperture tab. It's not a focus tab, it's actually controlling the aperture which I will go ahead and say I wish it was clicked. It's not a clicked aperture and it's really easy to accidentally move this. So not a great design, I'll be honest. And although it is an M mount lens, you're not actually gonna be focusing with the rangefinder. The lens isn't rangefinder coupled. So you're just gonna have to set your distance on the lens itself if you're not looking through like an EVF or the LCD. But with an 11 millimeter lens, it's super wide. It's gonna be really easy to set your distance and have plenty of depth of field, especially if you're gonna be stopping the lens down. Now, M mount lenses are really easy to adapt to a lot of different mounts like this Leica M to L adapter. I still have this adapter from when I was using the SL2. I used to always adapt lenses to that. Now I can adapt them to this S5 II, which just for the sake of demonstration, if you're curious just how wide 11 millimeters is, uh, this that I'm filming with right now on my S5 II is the Lumix 24 millimeter f1.8. Let's go ahead and throw this 11 millimeter on there and you can see what this looks like. You can see my entire desk here, my monitor, my lights and everything. It is crazy wide. It kind of reminds me of when I started the channel 10 years ago and I was just using a GoPro for everything. It's wild, but I kind of dig the way it looks in all honesty. Um, we'll go ahead and switch back to this 24 millimeter though. There we go. Okay. So about fisheye lenses, this is my first proper fisheye lens I've ever owned. When I first got into skating and I was watching skate videos and looking at skate magazines, I realized just how essential fisheye lenses really are when you're filming skateboarding or shooting photos of skateboarding. I had this little JVC mini DV camcorder that I used to film everything and I had a little fisheye adapter that just screwed on to the front of the camcorder. It's probably like 40 bucks on eBay at the time, uh, which was a very expensive thing for me. But it wasn't like a proper fisheye lens. It was just this thread on adapter and it had this heavy vignette. You could basically see the circle around the edge of the frame, but that's what I had to work with. I didn't have the money to buy a proper fisheye lens for any of my stills cameras, my XGM, my Minolta. I only had a 50 millimeter for that. And then when I bought a Nikon D60, I only had the 18 to 55 kit lens. So despite seeing a lot of fisheye footage and photos, I've never been that experienced when it comes to using a fisheye. Last fall, I found this spot at Tar Hollow Skate Tar Hollow Skate Park. I found this spot at Tar Hollow State Park and I wanted to shoot some skate photos there. So I brought my friends Tyler and Ben with me. I had my SL2 and a 24 to 70. That's all I was using. And that's really when I first thought I need to get a proper fisheye. Cause even though I'm not shooting skate photos all the time, it would be a lot of fun to shoot with. So as soon as I got this lens, that was the first thing I wanted to shoot was some skateboarding. So we went out to our friend Justin's house. He's a local skateboarder. He has this mini ramp that's just basically the community ramp. Everyone is welcome to skate whenever they want, which is amazing. Uh, so I went out there with some friends to shoot some photos of them with the M11 and this fisheye and it provided some unique challenges. The fastest sync speed on the M11 is 1 1 80th of a second. You can do high speed sync with Profoto gear and some Godox gear, but I was just using this little on-camera flash, the SF20, which isn't a very like feature-rich flash. I basically, uh, first I was trying to use it with this coiled cable, just one hand with the flash, one hand on the camera. Uh, but after a few minutes, I just put the flash on top of the camera and was shooting that way. Depending on who was doing a certain trick, sometimes they were facing to the left, sometimes they were facing to the right, and trying 
trying to like make sure I had the flash on the right side of each person and juggling the flash back and forth, I didn't feel like doing that. So I went ahead and just kept the flash on top of the camera. But my fastest sync speed, 1 1 80th of a second, even with a flash, you're still going to get some motion blur in there. So that's not really ideal. It can be a stylistic choice if you want to drag the shutter or something. But I was really trying to freeze the action there. So 1 1 80th of a second isn't really ideal for this kind of thing. And as far as composing, you're obviously not going to be using the viewfinder because it's nowhere near accurate for an 11 millimeter lens. So I was using the LCD. I would basically like frame up my shot how I think I would want it, whether I was holding it out in front of me or down low. I would kind of look there to preview it, but then as they were skating, I was just watching the actual trick happening rather than looking at the LCD at all. I was just watching them. And as soon as I knew when I wanted to shoot, I would just shoot at that moment. And I knew my camera was already in the place that I wanted it to be. And with a fisheye lens, you want to get close, not only just to have your subject like big enough in the frame, but also the more you get close and the more that distortion comes in, it really kind of elevates the actual skateboarding that's happening. That's what makes it so interesting when you're using a fisheye lens for this. And in the moment, it felt like I was as close as I could possibly be. Uh, it felt like, you know, any closer and they're just going to run their board directly into the lens. And after watching the footage back, I can see how much closer I could still get. It. So it's been a long time since I've shot skateboarding in any way like that. So uh, that's something I've got to work on is still getting closer even when I feel like I can't. Exposure wise though, I had the flash at full power, uh, usually F11 for most of the shots. 1 1 80th of a second like I mentioned and ISO the lowest it would go at 64. I really just wanted to try and match the sun as close as I could get. That way the sky and everything in the background wasn't completely blown out. But aside from skateboarding, another thing that always pops in my head when I think of fisheye photos are like live musicians or band portraits. I wanted to try something like that. And my friend Josh, his band Red Temple Prey, I feel like their music and that sort of aesthetic and like the old kind of 90s throwback look felt like a perfect fit. So they were having practice the other day. And before that, I asked them to meet up and shoot some portraits of them. So we went to this local bar in town, uh, the Wobbly Ghost. They just had a record release show at the bar recently, so I wanted to go in there and shoot some portraits of them with the fisheye and uh, just see what we could come up with. And composing with four different people all in the same frame with a fisheye lens was a lot more challenging than I thought it would be. Whoever's closest to the lens, there's going to be a lot more distortion on them as opposed to someone who's a little bit further back basically getting everybody as close as possible in order to like really fill the frame since I'm getting so close. Uh, it was challenging, but it was a lot of fun. For this one I was using the Westcott FJ80 flash and this is a proper speed light and it has a much wider throw of light than the SF20 from Leica so I wanted to make sure I could cover everybody as evenly as possible with the light and I was just doing everything wirelessly with this Westcott trigger so no cable or anything needed. We weren't there very long, we shot a few photos inside the bar as well as some outside on the side of the building. I used to shoot photos with bands all of the time, but never with a fisheye lens, so it was just fun to experiment and try something different and step out of my comfort zone a little bit. Uh, with the time I had, you know, I did what I could. I still don't know how I feel about it. I feel like I could have done a lot better with the photos, but it was quick and they love the photos, so that's really all that matters. Uh, but I appreciate them stepping in and, uh, you know, letting me test out this lens on them. And their new record is out. I'll be sharing a little bit of their music here in this video. So if you like the way it sounds, I'll have links down below so you can find them wherever you get your music, basically. But I'm glad I picked this lens up. Uh, having a real proper fisheye is something that I'm doing a little bit later in life than I probably should have back when I was always skating and had time to shoot photos 
all day, every day. I really wish I would have had this lens back then, but I'm having fun with it right now. So uh, if you want to see more stuff like this as I go out and shoot skate photos with it, definitely let me know. It's not something I have the opportunity to do all of the time. But when I do, if you guys like the video, uh, I will just bring you guys along with it. And a big shout out to KEH Camera for sponsoring this video and letting me try this lens out and making me want to buy it myself. While they've been a sponsor here on the channel for years now, I've been recommending KEH Camera since before I even started a YouTube channel. They've been in business for over 40 years buying, selling, and trading used photography equipment. Whether it's camera bodies, lenses, digital, or film, their inventory is massive and it's being updated every single day. They have a pretty strict grading scale as well, so you know what kind of condition your gear is going to be in when you buy it. But on top of that, they also have a free 180 day warranty and a 21 day return policy included with your purchase. And if you're not purchasing any gear, but you'd like to trade in or sell some of your gear, you can do that directly to KEH camera. You can schedule a video chat with one of their buyers to go over the gear that you have, and they'll even schedule a pickup for your gear so you don't have to leave the house or worry about shipping. Anytime you're shopping with KEH, whether you're buying gear or selling gear, make sure you use the links and the codes down below. The codes are going to help you save a little bit of money or get a bonus on your quote if you do decide to sell. But just shopping through these links here alone, it goes a long way at supporting the channel at no extra cost to you. So thank you again to KEH Camera for sponsoring this video. That's going to do it for this video though. If you guys have any questions or thoughts at all about this lens or the photos, I would love to hear it in the comments down below. But that's all. So thank you guys for watching. I love you. And I'll see you next time.